Hey guys, I'm Rachel Cruz. I'm George Camel. And this is Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Hour. Well, wow. well, that's a drink that's and a half. That's a special, special that's sipper. A spicy meat. Bowl. That's a special sipper. Well, uh, what is this show? Welcome to Smart Money Happy Hour, where two friends who happen to be money experts talk about what you're talking about. Everything from pop culture, current events, and of course, money. And today, we're talking about those friends from high school who DM you all about a new business opportunity they've got for you. <laughs> That's right. We are breaking down MLMs, the pros, the cons, the good, the bad, the ugly, the legal, the criminal. It's all in there, Rachel. And I'm a little nervous, so I'm glad we have a fun extra drink nervous. next to us. Yeah, before we dive into the very wild and controversial waters of network marketing, <laughs> let's take the edge off with a drink, Rachel. Today, we're sipping on an aviation. Yeah, and I don't think it's my favorite. Well, save that for the rating, mm -hmm. Rachel. Now no one's going to listen to the I know. End. I'm so sorry. I'll wait. But I will I'll say, wait. this is one of the prettier drinks we've ever had on this It is beautiful. Show. It is beautiful. So. And uh, we'll stick around till the end to find out what it is, how to make it, what it costs, and if we like it or not. All right. So let's dive into the polarizing topic of why, MLMs. Why it's so emotionally charged. It's very emotionally charged. We are very nervous about this whole episode. But we were like, you know what? You face your fears, George, in life. As my friend Christy Wright says, you do it scared. I am very scared. Just, so Christy would I'm, be proud. I am scared and we are going to do it. We're going to well, dive in. It is polarizing. What is your gut reaction when you hear the word MLM? Uh, this uh, is a safe place. I've never done one before. So I don't know if that says anything. Fair. Uh, I mean, I'll be, I'll be very frank. I'm going to stick up for it later in the episode. So don't hate on me, okay. people, quite right. yet. My, but my genuine just gut reaction is like, eh, not for me. And I'm probably going to get four other texts from this person. That's a very sweet reaction. What's your reaction? Mine is like projectile vomit. Oh, my gosh. And before we go any further, let me just say, because the, the, the comments are already flying. If you do MLM, listen, listen to me. I love you. Many of my friends are into MLM. A lot of people that work here do MLM. You are wonderful people. You're not doing anything wrong. I just don't support it as a business idea, okay? okay. The products can be great. Sure. I know you believe in the products and you believe it. I love that for you. <laughs> but don't come at me because I'm not against you. I'm against the system. Oh, uh, that's a great way of putting right? it, George. Okay. Sure. Okay, but let's talk about what is it? So we're saying MLMs, which is multi-level marketing. It is a legal business model that uses a network of independent sales representatives to sell products directly to consumers. So they sell really in two main ways. Primary way is selling the actual product of what it is. Number two is recruiting new sales representatives. So that's right. That's so the business model of an MLM. Th this is based on the concept of network marketing. And so the best people to market to, here's a quote, the best people to market and sell a product are the people using it. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. If it's something I that you so. love, whether it's makeup or vitamins or a protein shake. Shampoo. Fill, shampoo, fill in the blank. Uh, if you love the thing, you're like, oh my gosh, yeah, the, the essential oils, right? We all right? have things in our life that we love and we tell our friends about it. Yeah. So this so, is no different yeah. other than the, you know, vested interest because you might make a profit down the line. Might make a buck or two, you know? yeah. Okay, so there's a big distinction we have to make between multi-level marketing and pyramid schemes. Yes. They are very different. Yeah. Not all MLMs are pyramid schemes, which they're often accused of. So let's cover the difference between them. It's a thin line in some cases. It is. Okay. So a pyramid scheme uses the same structure as an MLM, except that in the pyramid scheme, the primary source of profit is recruiting new sales reps instead of selling the product. That makes sense. So less so focus the on the product, thing. more focus on recruiting. Exactly. Yep. So the money really that the company's main profit comes from is just from recruiting new sales reps, not from the actual sales of the product. Makes sense. So that's that's a good distinction. Okay. Now, with a pyramid scheme, the business model can't be sustained long-term. So that's a huge yep. distinction. If an MLM's been around for 60 years, it's probably not a pyramid scheme. That's right. Because it would not have survived all that time yes. if it was just relying on that. So eventually, you'll run out of people to recruit, and there won't be any more money to make, and that's when it goes out of business and you realize, hmm, 
That may have been a pyramid scheme. That wasn't entirely legal. Not all the way. And here's the big thing, Rachel. I don't want anyone to get taken taken advantage of. Yeah. That's really the heart of a lot of this. So here's what you need to ask if you're trying to separate legit MLMs from pyramid schemes. So let's go through a few questions here. Number one, is there real demand for these products? That's a good one because a legit MLM, the product is in demand in the public marketplaces. So, so this could be um, like I think of makeup, right? Like everyone buys makeup. That's a that's a demand. Uh, vitamins. People are looking to buy makeup. Yes. Uh, Essential oils. oils. Yeah. It's like there's things out there in the world that people are going to buy in a store or through an MLM. So if that's, if it's that type of product and it's not so niche that it's the only thing. It only exists as part of an MLM. And that's That's a huge red flag. That's where the red flag comes in. And another red flag, if it's a pyramid scheme, all the customers are also the sales reps. Oh, so it's just yeah. feeding itself inward instead of having any external customers. That's yes. a huge red flag to me. For a pyramid scheme. Okay. Have you ever used any MLM products? Yes, I have. Any specifically that you want to shout out? Um, I had some jewelry from Stella and Dot. Yes. And it was great. Great jewelry. I've used essential oils. I've gotten like, I'm not a bit, I'm not an essential oil like person, I would say. Sure. Like some people like have all the- Like they swear regiment. by them. Yeah. And I'm not mad at them, but there's like a doTERRA little peppermint oh, yeah. breath thing. It's like a little bead, and it has like crazy peppermint, and it's wonderful. Wow. I have I, I love like that. doTERRA products. I, I love think they that. make a great essential oil. Yeah, I'm trying. I've probably done some. I'm trying I've to think. But great things about Pampered Chef products. Weirdly, like people have had them for ten years, twenty years. Yes. it's the only ones I use. Like they hold up. I have the meat grinder thing from Pampered Chef, and Is it's that what wonderful. They does? It's this right Is that here. How you grind meat, and I've you never do that, and it gets grinder. really fine. Ground beef. Wow. Pampered chef. Okay. Some multi-level marketing products are actually really solid. Yes. Yes. I know. What gets me, though, and I've heard this before, is like this, which maybe this is a pyramid scheme. I've never thought about it till now. Someone tried to sell me. It, it was like a vitamin kind of thing. And they're like, it's the only vitamin that has X, Y, and Z in it without this and this. And that. It's the only thing. And I'm like, yeah, there's just a lot of vitamins out there. Like, I... That, that feels like a lie. Yeah. Well, so it's, a, it's when it's that kind of feeling where it's like, it's the they only— They oversell it to where you're now skeptical. Yes. And I'm like, or I Or when they're like, this that. cures cancer and <laughs> eczema at the same time. You're like, okay, just back off. Those get me. <laughs> yes, Now, yes. here's my thing. I trust Kirkland Signature brand over anything. <laughs> and so I'm like, why would I not just go to Costco to get my omega-3 fish oil? You know what I mean? I know. I know. That's how I personally feel. If it was so good, it would be in Costco. Okay, I have, I mean, I've had that thought. So even when we were doing research for this episode, I was like, yeah, so what what makes someone go start an MLM with a product that they've created versus just selling it in stores or whatnot? I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of answers to that, but well, it's the, a good question to the ask. The factor is profit. If you start the MLM, you make a whole lot of money. Well, if I just sure. launch a vitamin brand and try to get it in Target, yeah. that's an uphill battle. That, that's fair. Yeah, Okay, that's fair. another question to ask to figure out if there's a red flag here. What's the actual quality of the product? Yep. So a legit MLM, the products are the focus of the business. So the quality is a really high priority and it doesn't decline over time. Like like they are in business for the specific product because they believe it, they love it. And so they're going to work on the product versus a pyramid scheme, the product Not the focus. Declines. The quality then suffers because they don't really care about the product. It was never yes. the goal. They only exist to hide the real money maker, which is recruiting people. Yep. It's like money laundering. It's like a front. I know. I've seen Breaking Bad. Well, <laughs> I know what's going on in the back of that chicken restaurant. And we'll probably talk about this one later, but I feel like the most like exposing documentary was that Lulu Row, Lulu oh, Rich. Lulu Rich, yeah. Yeah, and that's a great example of the product because like people were quality getting- way down Yeah, they were like getting these shipments of yoga pants that had like- Holes in them, or like we're deformed. Look, I mean, like it was just crazy. So yep. that's a that's a good one. So a legit MLM, they really do care about the product. Yes, and if it sounds too good to be true, it is, and you should probably run. So if it says, "Hey, this product cures," it cured my cancer. Like no, there's a hair no product supplement is going to do that. An MLM hair product that looks amazing. I've heard like both sides of the story of that one, but you see before and after pictures of stuff, and you're like, of course they use the best before it looks and after. Amazing, yeah. So like, does it work? I but don't is know. It true. I don't know. Okay, another question to ask: Are you required to buy inventory up front to become a sales rep? This yeah. is a huge way the multi-level marketing companies make money is with the starter kits and the upfront costs. I know. So That's a how legit they get you. MLM upfront purchase of inventory is not required and no inventory purchase is required to stay in the company. That's big. So that's a so to get in 
they say, yep, yeah, no, pr- yes, you can start, you know, yes, you can buy a starter kit and all that, which we'll get into in a little bit, but it's not required. And then on the other side, it not. might be a pyramid scheme if <laughs> upfront inventory purchase is pushed heavily or is required to join as a sales rep. That would be a huge red flag. So the key here is don't overpay for these membership kits, these starter fees, these business kits. Yeah. That is a trap. So. And a lot of them like, have affordable options. Yes. To be fair. And a lot of them, yeah. I mean, Rodan and Fields is $75. Cincy is $25 to $99. doTERRA, $35 to $160, depending on what kit. Our bond forty nine to five hundred, and this was a big criticism of Lularoe. Yes, this Their is where the pyramid case. scheme kind of feels because Lularoe was like thousands, right? And at one point, they reportedly required their consultants to pay between five and ten grand. No, y'all. for a starter pack of inventory. Don't do it. Just say no. Okay, another question: What is the primary incentive structure? Yep. So a legit MLM. If you never recruit a soul to sell stuff, you can still make money by just selling the products. Whereas with a pyramid scheme, you only start making money when you recruit new sales reps for the company, and you really only make good money if you're heavy on the recruiting side. There's this much money to make with products. There's a whole lot to make with your downline is what yes, it's called. Yes, the downline. The downline. Which I think is part of MLM too, right? Like, Yeah, upline, downline. It's part of your network marketing yeah, structure. Yeah, that's how they make a lot of money, MLMs. But I've got to get you to sell it, and then you get Lindsay to sell it, and all of a sudden I have a downline. Yeah, which is an MLM though, right? That's not yeah. a pyramid scheme. That's, no, 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 that's not a pyramid scheme. Yeah, but, but the pyramid the, scheme is the, the only, only way. way. Yeah. yeah, the only way. That's that's the key here. Ugh. Okay, another question. What's the recruitment incentive structure? So a legit MLM, you get money when sales reps you recruited sell the product, just that like we're sense. talking about. I get you, I recruit you, you now sell product, I get a commission from that. Yep. That's exactly. essentially the structure. Yes. With a pyramid scheme, you get money when sales reps you recruited pay membership fees and buy inventory up front. So they're having to spend their own money in order for you to make money versus an MLM, they just need to sell more product and then that's how you make money. Yes. It's good. So it's a fine line, but we are making the distinction, people, because we are here for everyone. That's right. I just don't want people to get scammed. And truthfully, I've heard too many stories where people lose tons of money doing this stuff yeah. versus make a dime. Because yeah. people get into it because they want some side income. They're trying to pay off debt. For they sure. want to save up that emergency And fund. some people have done that. Like I've gotten lots of people like on Instagram and stuff, and even people here that they've taken the time. They and they it. Yeah, and, and they do they're, great. they're great, wonderful people. Yes. And there's nothing, you know, savory going on there, if you will. <laughs> but... There's a lot of red flags still. So if you're told that real money comes from recruiting people to the team, that's a red flag. Yep. And the last question to ask, George, is how long has the MLM been around? So a legit MLM, if the products are good and in demand, the company should stay in business for a long time. They are reputable. They have a history. Yeah, all of it. And if pyramid scheme, it's not sustainable. It will collapse on itself like a house of cards when the profit from recruiting fees slows down. Okay. I feel like we just educated the people. That's that what we needed. Good this was our baseline foundation. Now, I want to get into why do people love to hate MLMs so much, George? Why are you looking at me? Because you I are- don't enjoy this. <laughs> I want nothing to do with this. Okay, so I think the biggest thing is because the way a lot of people try to recruit you and try to get you can to I buy give the it a, product. Can I give it an aggressive term? Sure. I think it's social suicide Ooh. to go all in on MLM. Mm. And here's why. It makes sense. Mm. So I've made the joke that cryptocurrency is just Mary Kay for young men. <laughs> and it gets a fun laugh, right? We all love it. But here's why. The people that are in it are obsessed with it, and they've sold their souls to this idea. And if you're not in, you just don't get it, Rachel. <laughs> you just don't get it. And I need to cut you out. Because you don't. if you don't understand crypto and the blockchain, you just, you're just you not here to build wealth. <laughs> That's the vibe I get from the MLM folks. Yeah, yes. They're so obsessed that it's a huge turnoff. Yep. And they lose friends. Yes, because here, there's probably some great stories here. Because I'm like, there's I've seen it done really well. So I have a friend and— she has a friend that does a clothing MLM. So she has like parties and stuff, but it's very upfront. It's very like obvious, like, hey, this is an MLM party with clothes. Come. And if you want to come, you can. There's no pressure. And they have cute clothes. I've bought stuff from them. But yeah, so like it's legit. Yeah, it's great. And so I'm like, that's great. But then you've been in situations where you don't know you're at a quote unquote party. It's a sneak attack. And then it's a sneak attack. And I'm like, whoa, you're sending me a, I'm getting a form right now. I'm getting a form. I didn't know I'm getting a form right now. And 
that's why I don't like parties. it. Yes, I have George twice, and I feel so used. So what do I they feel say? Used. They say, Rachel, we're having a party. We'd love to have you. Yeah. Yes. There was a wine night. Oh, the and they had a sommelier, or what I thought. Sommelier. You say sommelier. What even is that? Sommelier. Sommelier. I'm not fancy. It's I French. Try to be it's fancy. a very bougie they French word. They have pins. I've watched the wine documentary They're wine on Netflix. Experts. That's all. Say it, it is. again. Say it again. Sommelier. Som. Say it again. Sommelier. A som. I'm going to call it som. a som. I'm going to call it a som. Mm-hmm. It's the wine experts at nice restaurants. So I was thinking like a wine tasting in my head, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is like a fun girls' night out. And we went, and then at the end, the the lady started passing out forms to buy cases of this wine. I was oh. like, and I Did literally, you buy a case? literally, no. I turned to the girl next to me. I was like, is this like a is this like an MLM kind of thing? She was like, yeah, I think so. And I was like, I, I was just like, me neither. But then the pressure to buy is, I mean, it's But there. I said, no, I really I'm felt, proud of I you. felt very, I'm proud of you. yes, I you really, felt, it felt dirty, didn't it? Yes, because I'm happy to support people if I know what I'm, like, that I'm supposed to be in it to support them. I'd rather just buy a ticket to your wine tasting. Oh my gosh. So I, and then I had a friend, this is one of the worst ones I thought, and she, so the friend was getting married, okay? Sure. And her friend was like, hey, can I throw you a bridal shower? That's nice. So, yep. So you think. So they go. And then at the end of the party, she like walks them up to a room in her house that was like this entire like shop for the MLM to have all the girls, I think, buy the stuff there for no, 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 the no, bridal no. shower. Can you believe that? God bless women. Now, this stuff doesn't happen. Like there are some like man MLMs, but most of them center around like females and I female know. products. So that, that's why I said love to hate social suicide because you hear these stories and you're like, Oh, Listen, man. I would block a bro without hesitation if that happened to me. I know. I'd be like, well, didn't bro. need that friend anymore. Yeah. So here's what these messages sound like. I'm going to attempt it. Hey, hun, I'm launching a new business and really think you should take a look at joining me. <laughs> right? That's the kind of stuff they say. Yes. <laughs> Let's or see George. your pitch. Hey, George, would you be open to a side hustle that wouldn't interfere with anything that you're doing right now? I mean, that sounds wonderful, sounds Rachel. Sounds amazing. One of the big things, too, that people love to hate is the over-promising and under-delivering. So MLM reps and consultants will try to hype you on on, like, living your best hype, life. Hype, hype. You're a boss, babe. You can own your own business. Like, all this stuff. Wow, thank you. So it, it does make it feel like, oh, I can, like, create my own schedule and do my own thing, which is true. I mean, sure. It's on your terms. That. It is on your terms. Just yeah. like if you're a commission salesperson, hey, it's on your terms. You can make as many calls as you want and make yeah. the calls when you want to make them. But it's a lot of hard work. It's It can be a full-time job. Yeah. And unless you devote your life to it, it's really hard to make money. It is. So we actually pulled uh, some income disclosure statements. This Okay, I'm going to let you do it because it just feels, <sighs> I don't know why. It's facts. Yes. So we're not being mean about it. No, it's, they legally all multi level marketing companies. So it's just an interesting companies, thing. Okay, go. They I legally to have to up. disclose their income disclosure statement. Yeah. Which is how much money people actually make doing this. Mm-hmm. And part of it is because of regulation after all these pyramid schemes and scams and over promising. You ready for this? Yes. Okay. Entry level, let's talk about Young Living, very popular one. Entry level consultants, 64%. Of their sales force are entry level consultants. They made an average of twenty two dollars. Oh wow! In twenty twenty two, twenty two dollars. Because majority and and because majority of people just kind of get into it that first round and then they they well, stop. And because of the upfront costs, like there's a lot of investment, and unless you really know what you're doing, you may not make any money. Yeah, yeah. Here's the kicker, though, Rachel. One percent, only one percent of their brand partners made more than thirty five hundred dollars on average per year. Oh, wow. Now, $3,500 may sound like a lot of money to you, but if you picked up any part-time job at any retailer or any hospitality job, you would make way more than that. Yeah. Way more than that for the time you put into it. Yes. Let's move on to Arbonne. Okay. It's a family favorite, right? Mm Mm-hmm. 61% of their sales force, their entry-level consultants, made an average of $194 in 2021. Again, that's pennies. Only 4% made more than $10,000 per year on average. That's pretty shocking. A small percentage, yeah. Beauty Counter, entry-level consultants, which makes up 71% of their sales force, made an average of 41 bucks a month in 2021. So we're talking less than 500 bucks a year. 500 bucks, yeah. Only 4% made more than 10K a year. And that's on top of the $50 enrollment kit, the new brand advocates that spend approximately $273 on average at the time of enrollment, and a $50 annual fee. Oh, man. So they're in almost $400 for the fight. Yeah. 
And that's without making and, a dime. And that's because majority of them, again, they sign up at a party or something, and they don't do anything with it. So that's the majority that's built up, I'm assuming, of the business, right? Is yes. people that just think in one afternoon, I'm going to do it, and then three weeks later, they're not doing it. What's genius about it is I go, hey, Rachel, it's 500 bucks to sign up, but you can make great money if you're serious about it. You go, okay, all right, yep, 500 bucks. I know. And then I take your money, and then you go, wait, I'm not making any money. Because I'm not doing it. And I go, well, I'm you're not just not, it. but you're not invested enough, Rachel. <laughs> Let me coach you. You're not, you need to recruit more people. Do you see how it be, can I become know, manipulative? I know, but now, I do know people that have done it and have made can some make, money. Let's call out the people that do make incredible money doing this. Yes. If you're at the top, you've got a great downline, you can make bank, like, like si high lot. six figures. Yes, because there's people making, yeah, up to over half a million dollars a year. Now, again, that's over a long period of time. And a lot of hard work that yes. they go into it. So I don't want to take that from them. It's kind no, of like our influencer earned, episode episode that like... Influencers earn every dime. Yeah, and, but but you can't just go pick that up really quickly and make a ton of money to like pay off debt. So This is devoting your life to it. Yes, that's exactly right. Yep. Very so, different. Okay, but here's my thing. If entrepreneurship is your goal, you could start a small business and probably do better instead of being an independent contractor. Yeah. You know? And here's the here's a crazy fact from the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission. It okay. doesn't get more official than that. Here's their quote. Failure and loss rates for MLMs are not comparable with legitimate small businesses, which have been found to be profitable for 39% over the lifetime of the business, whereas less than 1% of MLM participants profit. Oh, wow. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty nuts. I mean, that's... that's... You've got a 40% chance at success with a small business, a 1% chance at success with MLM. Some people that think, oh, I want to run my own business, they don't realize all of the things that you have to do to run True. a business where an MLM, you can just plug and play. Yes. You know what I mean? Because you're, truthfully, you're not running a business. Yeah. You're 1099. It's like me working for Uber being like, well, I work for a, uh, a high profile rideshare company. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's fine. Yeah, totally. I know. I know. I deliver luxury foods. No, you work for Uber Eats. Let's not, <laughs> let's not, you know, let's not kid ourselves here, Rachel. Can we talk about, though, this is probably the one that stands out in my mind. Yeah. The luxury cars that you can oh, get. Oh, and you see them. You, and you see know them. That, that, that light pink Would you Cadillac. drive a pink Cadillac? It's not for me. No, I don't know if I would. I, I don't know. I think that goes like. without saying that I wouldn't be caught dead driving a pink Cadillac. <laughs> But you know, for these people, if you're driving Mary that Kay pink thing. Cadillac, it's a sign of success. You're, that means you have devoted your life, and you are not embarrassed of that pink Cadillac. No. But but a, but a person off the street, it's not like what I would choose to drive. You definitely like have like a Mary Kay tattoo if you are driving <laughs> that pink Cadillac. It's a lot. You okay, have, so what's wild about the car is like it's not technically a free car. No, it's not yours. In your mind, you're like, in my well, head, they, I thought that they get to keep it forever. This isn't Price is Right. I didn't just donate a Cadillac yeah, to Rachel. I thought they got it forever and ever. But give us the scoop, okay, George. Okay, here's the scoop, the insider details that you guys listen to this show for. Every time you see that car, so think obviously of this. you have to meet a certain sales tier in the company to qualify. You have to be crushing it. Then the car itself has to be purchased and leased in your name. Mm. Which, if you've been around Ramsey, you know how we feel about leasing cars. We don't care for it. Not mm -hmm. a fan. Nope. Uh, of course, it has to be. Pink. It has to have the low. It's got to be wrapped a certain way. But I'm sure they do all that, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I'm just saying, you don't get to choose the color. N no. You oh, better no. love pink. <laughs> Which, by the way, would you drive a Ramsey branded car? Oh, I think gosh. I would. I don't know. I would do I it would. if it was tasteful. I would I don't do know it. if I could. <laughs> what if it had your face on? No. It? If it was your face not. on the car. I always felt weird. Like when we used to do book tours, you put the book on the side and your book always had That's your face true. on it. And I always felt weird about that. But I was like, oh, it's for three weeks of my life for a purpose. Sure. But just for the heck of it, like driving downtown to dinner, I don't, Listen, I don't know. Even, if, if Dave was like, hey, extra grand a month if you got the R logo, I'd be like, yeah, I'm in. You know, I'll represent. <laughs> I'm honored to represent. I mean, $12,000 a year? Sure. Right? Okay. Sure. So, Depends on how big it is. If you agree to all those terms, you're crushing it on the sales side, you yeah. agree to the right color, all the MLM logo displayed in the right places, it's a lease in your name, then the MLM will give you cash payments to pay the lease. So that's fair. Essentially, that's a cash bonus. So let's say the lease is 500 bucks a month. They're essentially giving you six grand a year to pay this lease. Yeah, yeah, okay. Here's the kicker, though. You have to hit your quota and stay at the same level in the company 
to receive those payments. Which means if you don't, if you take a dip in sales, if you have a Are bad month. Are you stuck month, with a lease car in your name? You're stuck with the <gasps> lease payments because oh, it's in no. your name. And by the way, those, those payments counts as income. So you have to pay taxes on that. They're also on the hook for car insurance. And the insurance they pay through Mary Kay is almost always higher than what they would qualify for outside Elsewhere. of them. Oh, wow. They own the insurance too. So you're responsible for the payments. If something mm. happens, you don't keep up. Uh, and so here's what happens. Consultants end up scrambling to make sales to keep their quota because no one wants to be on the hook. Yeah. Which just helps Mary Kay because then yep. you're, you're staying there. You're stuck there. It's golden handcuffs. Oh, man. So it's chains shackling you to Mary Kay more than it is a beautiful <laughs> gift from Bob Barker on The Price is Right. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That's the end of it. Oh, <sighs> I'm glad we got to the bottom of that. I, I didn't know that, though. I didn't know any of that. You can Google it. You can figure it out. People I know. choose not to, Rachel. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> choose, choose to live the with their out head there. in their sand. I have just chosen to spill it. There you go. You're a great Thank tea you. spiller, George. Uh, we're not done yet. Another, but wait, there's more. Another reason <laughs> people love to hate it is the manipulative tactics. That's right. Which we kind of already talked about We We touched here. on this. Um, but uh, I we read this story on BuzzFeed that one woman faked a flat tire in Target parking lot and when people came to help her, she pitched them and they're her MLM. That's genius. I'm gonna like it's fake a heart terrible. attack in public and be like, oh my gosh, thank you. By the way, are you interested in making some money as a side hustle? <laughs> and this happened to me in Target. I think I've shared this story. Yeah, remember this happened to Jordan. This happened to Lindsay's oh, husband. Yes, yes. we've talked about this. But the this. guy in Target stops me in the aisle, yeah. compliments my glasses. Ask where it's just I like work, the guy from the mall. Tells me I'm a sharp guy. You think I wouldn't fall for it? Now I was way more. I had my my spidey senses were tingling, Rachel. You knew they were tingling. And he goes, "Oh, I actually go to church with Dave. I saw his grandson get baptized. Hey, are you interested in doing? I this is a Fortune 500 company. And I, as soon as I, I said, "Well, what's the name of it?" And he was hesitant to tell me. And I went, "Oh, cool. Thanks. I'll look into it." Googled it. It's an MLM. Oh man. And I, yeah. I no know. Thanks, and that's Hanks. my hard thing, you guys, is I'm like, I'm not mad at them because I think some people do it really well. They do it really sure. classy and really well, and it's great stuff. Yes. And then— and again, I have a lot of friends get... that do it, and they're not manipulative, and they're wonderful yes. people who just want to share how a product has helped them. <laughs> and those people are great. So we found this one that apparently you can use this uh, when a potential new recruit says that her husband— doesn't want her to so join. So they have scripts based on objections. They have scripts, yeah. Which is, you know, that's pretty normal in the sales world. Sure, so yeah, yeah, that's fair. So let's not bash sales scripts, but this, this is, is an the, especially strange tactic. This is if the hubby says no, you say. Just by the way, can we just call out that hubby. Just saying the word hubby <laughs> makes me have a little acid reflux. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it at all. It's what it says on the script. Like if you refer to your husband as hubby <laughs> to another person, you are not okay. <laughs> Oh I need to ask hubby. <laughs> no, you need counseling, hun. I, sweetie, honey. What do you call Winston in public? Like to another friend? Uh, Winston. But ba- I call him babe, like at home. Like if I'm like calling like his name, I'm like, hey, babe. That's normal. That's like our like. Uh, but in front of friends, you'd never be like, hey, hubby said no. No, what did you, what do you call Whitney? Do y'all have like a. Yeah, I think babe or uh, tiny for some reason is our little nickname for each other. <laughs> I don't know where it came from. <laughs> Again, I don't know where this came from, but at one point while we were dating, we started calling each other tiny. And we're both, here's the thing. I don't know if you can tell because the camera makes me look people. really tall. We're both little people. She's like 5'3". I'm 5'6". On a good day. Full confidence. I just can't believe that you slammed women for saying hubby. I don't do it. In, but again, tiny. we're talking about in public, Rachel. If I'm talking to you, I'm not going to call my wife anything other than Whitney. <laughs> okay. Okay? Tiny. I, you better believe I'm going to pull that one out. Next oh, time gosh. I ask you guys. Whitney's watching hey, this. Like, why would you Whitney, tell them that? We love you. Why would you tell them that? Anyways, you want to read the script? I'll read it. Do okay. it in the accent, though. There's an accent. What? There's an accent. Just like the girl accent? Like, like oh my, the valley girl. Oh like, yeah. I totally get your concern as far as putting money into something and not getting your money back. Trust me. And I definitely understand wanting to get the opinion of others to make sure that you're making the best decision for you. But why would you want other people's opinions on something that they know they don't have any idea on what it is? I wouldn't ask my cashier at the grocery store how to do open heart surgery, you know? 
I know you're nervous. I promise you, sis, we all just, we all felt like that. But I will be here with you every step of the way to show you how to be successful. Wow, what a journey we just went on. <laughs> Is this, I and this so is real. Badly, we found this. Like, I want to be at Publix tonight and be like, hey, <laughs> can you help me with open heart surgery? Because that's a common scenario we've always found ourselves in where there's an emergency open heart surgery that needs to happen in a Publix. And I'm like, hey. Sis, calm down. Yeah. Sis. Sis. <laughs> Sis. Calm down. Okay. Calm down. So ethical sales tactics are important. Yes. In MLM. Yeah. And I just it don't like that predatory, manipulative behavior. I get it, George. I know, but sometimes Do you works. admire the boldness and tenacity of it? Again, if you do it with class, I think there's a time and a place for it. Okay, so if you're asking yourself, should I join one? Here are some things to think about, okay? You want to love the products that the company is selling. Yes. I think that's a huge thing. Like, really, if, like, the vitamins you love or the hair product you love, the makeup, whatever it is, like, if you really do love it, that's great. Also, you need to love sales and recruiting that's because true. that's a that's how you're going to make the big bucks truly you if you have people under you selling the product too that's honestly where a lot of the money comes also you need super thick skin yes because you're probably going to get a lot of no's a lot of rejection there's probably a lot of rejection in and this here's world. the worry with that there's a lot of alienation and isolation that happens in this world because when you are rejected from friends and family you're kind of told to just hey cut them off they don't get it you need to be around people who get it. Not all places, George. But that's a tactic that is used. That's a cult. People, MLMs and do not do that And what I'm telling you is there's some cult-like behavior happening so, in some of these MLMs. Okay, the ones that I know of friends that have done it, if I say Agreed. no, they're not like, oh my gosh, you're not buying my Stella and Dot jewelry. You're We're not friends. No. I saw, okay. No. Can I, can I just tell you? So there is a, there is a subreddit called Anti-MLM. 800,000 subscribers, people sharing their stories of being affected by this, being in oh, one, wow. so getting been out. Like... Can I just read this headline to you? Oh you this gosh. will blow your mind, Rachel. I'm kind of nervous to tell you. My grandparents are cutting everyone out of their will if they don't sell Shakely. Stop it. For Stop real. It. They're Stop saying it. that Shakely is our legacy and there's no inheritance <laughs> for anyone who won't join up. Oh that is a gosh. real post. No. No. George. So that's wow. that. Wow. So I'm not saying that happened. Like I'm a lot sure, of people yeah. don't destroy relationships, but a lot of times you end up wow. who's your community at the end of the day. It's the other people yeah. in your upline, your yeah. downline, who you're coaching, oh and you gosh. lose real friends because you are so laser focused. It's hurt <sighs> marriages. Oh my gosh. Think about it. Okay. So you need thick skin. George is here to do the therapy that's for you. That's one way to put it. And okay. last but not least, I would say, are you financially and emotionally in it for the long haul? This like because that's how you make play. the money. You got to be in it for a while. If you need money quickly, money. just go work at your local Walmart or Target or wait tables. Or Uber, yeah, Uber, Uber Eats. Um, yeah, but there's this a lot is not of ways. Quick to do money. Some, yeah, this is if you're in it for the long haul, then you can make some great money. So, if if you answered yes to some of those, it may it might be a great option for you. Thank you for say. being reasonable. Okay, Rachel. George, we got done with it. I got you, I just the whole thing was just like well, I was just very nervous. Can I, so a listener shared a story with me, and okay. I just feel like I have to tell you. Can I just tell oh you quickly? Gosh. Here's the thing. Yeah. It's real quick. Kay. Here's what it is. They shared with me that they've been a part of seven MLMs. And every single one, between the startup costs and the personal investment, having to buy inventory, they lost money on every single one. Now, say what you will about this person. I counted up how much they've lost. Their net loss. After all the money they've made and all the money they spent— they have a net loss of almost fifteen thousand no. dollars between seven MLMs. No, and I will okay. leave it at that. But here's what I'd say to that person: Love you, friend, and I bet you're great. But after the third, just say no. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Agreed. Yes. Because obviously, you're not great at recruit. Like you're not great at selling. It's and not recruiting. for everyone. Yeah, it's, it's a certain skill but set. But that is really sad. But it, and that's I know what people that have heart. tried to start a new business on their own. Everyone and they lost thinks money. they're going to be so, in, they're going to be the one percent, the top four percent, right? And they're not. They're the ninety six. They're the ninety nine percent. I know. So you just so, we're just giving you the facts. That's just the facts, ma'am. <sighs> this all was right, a very I'm dicey done. episode. My soapbox is over. Please don't come after me. I love you all, including the MLMers. I do too. And the products can be great. And it's great. Don't yeah. pitch it to me. I will block you. But. Oh my gosh. God bless. God bless. All right. Well, since we're almost at the end of the episode, George, we close out every episode with... 
guilty, guilty as charged. charged. Where our producer Lindsay gives us a new guilty as charged question every week. All right. Hit us. Um, have you ever taken credit for something you didn't do? Mm. Oh, wow. Deep. I mean, I'm sure in life. I really try not to, especially here at work with our roles. We have yes. so many people that help us on every That's single true. thing. So I really do. I'm like, I never want people to think it's like, oh, you're just doing your job. I'm like, so amazing. I'm like, you have no idea the team that like. I mean, if you spin helps. the cameras around, there's 17 Even right people here that at make Smart this Money happen. Happy Hour. I know. So, so the oh, I try not to, but I mean, I. I'm sh- I'm sure there's been a thing in my day. Where- I think when I was younger, I was more apt to try to take credit. But yeah. as I've gotten older, more mature, more wise, I'm more likely to give away the credit and accept the blame. So basically, we are all perfect. We are both so By perfect. Way, like, group projects, 100%. <laughs> I take some credit. We know that both of you have totally taken credit. Yeah, group before. projects. And early on in my career, I was probably more likely to be like, well, technically, that was kind of my idea. <laughs> like, you kind of want to own it in the meeting. Because you're trying to like, you know, make yeah. make your name for yourself yep. and trying to imp- like improve your career and get promoted and sure. all those things. Yep. So you're likely justifying why the success was you're doing. It was so great. Mm-hmm. Which is an unhealthy tactic. Don't do it. Don't do that. Don't do that. All right. Have you done it, Lindsay? Oh, I'm sure. Do it I right now. It- <laughs> Take credit <laughs> for this episode. Take credit for this, this entire podcast. Yep. MLMs. No, I don't think any of us like chose this episode. This was like, I have to do this <laughs> oh for America. I'm doing this. I actually feel like this was probably your This George was the thing was, I fought for because George I'm very was passionate really about it. passionate. Oh my gosh. So wow. if you have a new guilty as charged question, make sure to DM us at Rachel Cruz and at George Cam with a K on social. And who finished you? I'm much closer. It. Thank you. It just wasn't my favorite, George. You know, it it settled in once I got used to it. Really? Okay, so this is the aviation, a beautiful, it's got a nice lavender hue with a little uh what's the what are those called? A lemon rind? A lemon twist is what lemon I say. Twist. I That's could right. be wrong. Lemon twist. You're correct. Here's what is in the aviation. It's got gin, luxardo, creme de violette. <laughs> That's the purple stuff. And lemon juice. <laughs> it's delicious, and it costs $4.11 oh, per drink. Oh, my gosh. Expensive. It's pricier because you've got to get Ooh. the luxardo, which is like the, you know, cherry liqueur. Yeah, I guess so. But uh, if you want the recipe. How would, how would you rate it? Mm. Not your favorite. Four. Wow. I was going to give it a six. If yeah. you like a gin forward drink, I think I just you'd wasn't like in this. the mood. I wasn't in the mood for a cocktail right now, if I were to be honest. So maybe that's why too. I wasn't going in Feels like unfair. I wasn't going in with like, oh, I can't wait. Well, someone from Instagram sent me this recommendation, oh, okay. and I was like, that sounds nice. It's be- it's the prettiest drink we've ever had, probably. One hundred percent. I think it's so great. If you want to find the recipe, you can d- find that in the show notes. I'm going to give it a six out of ten. Rachel gives it a four out of ten. Try at your own demise. And peril. Whatever you feel like. Peril. There is danger. (sighs) Okay. And something really exciting, George, before we close everything out, is your new YouTube channel, which is so great, you guys. So make sure go search George Camel on YouTube. Subscribe. Get those numbers high because you're spreading truth. I need them. I need all the the validation I can get, Rachel. All across the world, world, George. You are spreading hope and information. I'm trying. And, uh, so you know, if, you. we'll put the link in the show notes as well, the yes. YouTube description, but it's a personal finance YouTube channel. A lot of the stuff we talk about here, but deep dives in just me and my own self without the great Rachel Cruz. Oh, but, but it's I so think great. people who like this podcast and show will like that. They're going to love it. Thank so you. fun. Well, guys, we'll see you next Thursday on a new episode of Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Hour. Women. Women.